Hi everybody, meteorologist Joe Chaffee. It's a Saturday afternoon. I don't think I don't know if I can turn this. Okay, I know some of you have been asking about him, and there he is, asleep, or just laying there with an attitude. Anyway, I hope your holiday weekend is going uh, well. Uh, we are looking at a very large area of a severe, potential severe weather outbreak today from the mid-Atlantic states westward uh, all the way into the middle Mississippi Valley back into Oklahoma and Texas. And, you know, this yellow area is the slight risk. You can see how large it is. It extends up into Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, even into Iowa. And then you have an area of enhanced risk that inside that you have an area of moderate risk across Missouri, southern Illinois, western Kentucky, northwestern Tennessee, northernmost Arkansas, northwestern Colorado, and southeastern Kansas. So certainly a very busy day from the standpoint of severe weather today. And I just want to give you an outlook for Sunday, uh, the slight risks that runs from Texas northeast and to the Ohio Valley and then swings east to uh, the mid-Atlantic. And when we move to Monday, we're going to shift it to the east coast with a marginal risk into southern New Jersey, southeastern Pennsylvania, southward, and a slight risk from the Carolinas southwest into Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi. So it looks like a relatively busy couple of days ahead and we'll uh, take a look at how this all pl is playing out at the moment on the satellite in the early afternoon and here we have that uh, storm system kind of taking its time moving away to the northeast that's why this lead disturbance here is weak uh, there's not a lot of room and it's being forced southeastward now we actually started out with a lot of sunshine this morning but clouds have since rolled in and taken over and there are even some showers showing up on the radar and here's that system that next system for us for our area at least it will be for monday but uh through here we've got a uh area of low pressure uh and this is where we're going to see our development of severe weather today and when we look at the radar at the moment these are some dying showers that are moving east this afternoon across new jersey parts of southern pennsylvania north central maryland headed for Delaware and southern New Jersey, maybe even a little bit of this touching Long Island. Not too much else going on up and down the East Coast, but then we'll uh, shift our attention to where the severe weather threat is. And it's a bit early, but we are already seeing some across Kansas into Missouri. And this is the area of enhanced risk, and we're seeing development there uh, in the early part of the afternoon. Some trailing showers that go best west back through Nebraska and Colorado. The West Coast is looking okay, uh, pretty dry up and down. And when we look at the West Coast satellite, uh, here's the, the system moving out of the Central Plains. You can see uh, the, as the visible uh, takes over once we get past sunrise, uh, very good conditions here. Some of the grayer areas you see here, those are the usual patches of low clouds and fog that tend to develop in, uh, overnight in the valleys. And you get that coastal fog that develops uh, along uh, California all the way up to the coast of Washington and you can see it there just inland of the coast in some places so that's a daily phenomenon as we uh, uh, look at what happens out in the western part of the United States so let's take a look at how this is all going to play model wise and we're going to actually what I want to do I think you know what let's run through the GFS model first then I want to look at the upper air and, the, and I want to particularly look at the European uh, the GFS lately has uh, not really been holding up very well in the broad scope of things. But here's our low for today that just kind of slides southeast and dies out. And here's where we get that the severe weather development uh, through the middle Mississippi Valley. And then on up uh, for Sunday, uh, showers uh, across the northeast, except near the coast, where I think there's going to be a lot of cloud, low clouds to deal with tomorrow and even some uh, spotty drizzle that might come in from off the ocean but the main action will be with the front that's out uh, further west and that's going to approach the coast on monday i don't think monday is going to be a particularly nice day from the standpoint of clouds and, and here's the weather front that's moving through and that's going to run the risk of uh, some showers and some and some uh, thunderstorms and you've got some uh, cool unstable air coming in behind it you know the threat for some showers continues you know, you see them popping up again on Tuesday in the east and across the Gulf states. And again on Wednesday as another weather front kind of swings on through. I think that's the pattern we're going to be in here is that we're going to see weather fronts coming through 
every couple of days. And in the west, you know, we see the development of some showers uh, during the uh, late afternoon and into the overnight hours, and then they kind of flare up again on uh, Thursday and disappear. So, you know, it doesn't look like anything too unusual. Next weekend, looks like some kind of low is going to try to come out of the uh, southern plains again and produce maybe another severe weather outbreak. And it looks relatively cooler than average across much of the Great Lakes and the Northeast. Uh, by the way, you know, I did mention a couple of times already that, you know, we're getting into the time of year where we're going to start to see models spinning up lows in the tropics. And you, you would think that they might be tropical storms or something. And, and, you know, it's doing that very late in the period. So if you are looking, this is actually day 11, which is June 8th. I mean, it's not outside of the room of, uh, in, in the, in, uh, it's not outside of climatology because if it's going to happen this time of year, it usually happens down in the, uh, in the Gulf of Mexico and particularly the Southeast Gulf and into the Northwest Caribbean. Uh, but just because the model has it doesn't mean it's real. So I just want to point that out. You're going to see a lot of this if you look at these models on your own. And as we get deeper into the tropical storm season, you're going to see them spin up Category 5 hurricanes sometime, sometimes. And, you know, almost the vast majority, and I mean the vast majority, 99% of the time, um, they're, they're, they're not really there. So every once in a while, it'll, it'll show up when it's real. And you kind of get in, you'll kind of know when the model is... Uh, meaning business. So uh, I'm not going to, you know, I don't get worked up about, about, about those sorts of things that many days out. Now, we look at the upper air pattern starting from this weekend. You know, everything is moving along, but there actually is some little bit of a blocking high that develops up in Greenland. You can kind of see the edge of it here. Uh, this is on a Tuesday of next week. Now, the thing is, it's a little further east than what we saw with the prior blocks, at least initially. But it, it still does, have, you know, does the same thing where it displaces the jet stream further south into the eastern part of the United States uh, and a ridge builds up out in the Rockies to the west. So, you know, it is going to provide a, a flow of cool, unstable air. And you can still see that little blocking high. But again, it's a little more east of Greenland than it is over Greenland itself. But this uh, displaced jet to the south continues through all of next week. And uh, now we're into June 8th and June 9th, and it actually drops some kind of upper low here. You know, now at this point, you know, the blocking high, it's still kind of there. Just You can just barely see it on the edge of this particular map view. But, you know, the general idea to me con uh, continues with the idea of troughing in the eastern part of the United States, which is going to keep things average or even in terms of temperatures a little bit below average uh, we have the new european out but let's go to the old one from the overnight first and take a look at that and you, you can see here on the uh, european it actually develops a narrower blocking high later this week right over greenland but it still does the same job in displacing that jet and, and here it is on day five which is on thursday june 1st the uh, edge of the blocking high Again, moving into Greenland is a little more east based, but the European wants to shift that uh, into Labrador. So, you know, that's going to have maybe some sort of different consequences in terms of what kind of day to day weather to expect, but it still has this sort of active, you know, has this very active jet that's coming down out of Canada. And eventually, toward the end of the period last night, actually had a big upper high sitting up uh, in Western Canada. So, you, you have a split flow that, that sets up across the west now whether that's temporary or not remains to be seen but why don't we just give i just want to give the uh, european the new european a quick look here and uh, we only have it out to 96 hours um, but you know here it is this is for wednesday of this week so you know same idea here here's your trough ridge in the west you know displaced jet further south and there's the edge of your blocking high uh, that's trying to form uh, up uh, just you know to the east of Greenland anyway, but uh, that 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 idea is very consistent from model run to model run. So we're gonna wait and see you know how this all plays out from a practical standpoint. You know one of the things that I, I just want to you know point out in um, it was we get into June sometimes you know if the jet is displaced this far south, I'm not saying it could it will happen, but one of the things you have to watch out for. Is sometimes these troughs get stretched out 
and you wind up with you know an upper low that that drops southeastward and drops off the mid-atlantic or even the south atlantic coast and water temperatures there are certainly warm enough that if something like that were to happen and if it were to sit over those tropical over those subtropical uh, warmer waters long enough you know every once in a while a, trop a tropical depression or even a tropical storm comes out of it i'm not saying that that's going to happen but if we're going to have some kind of blocking up to the north that's going to displace the jet south in the eastern part of the United States, I think it's probably something that, you know, I might want to uh, pay attention to in terms of a possibility. So uh, to wrap it up, you know, again, it's the severe weather threat today uh, throughout much of uh, the middle Mississippi Valley is indicated by the Storm Prediction Center. I'll just put that map up back one more time um, if I can find it. And there we have it. Here it is for today. That large area of moderate risk across the middle Mississippi Valley with slight risk extending all the way to the mid-Atlantic coast and down into northeast Texas. So if you're in this area, pay, pay close attention to uh, weather warnings and watches <clears throat> that are likely to be going up uh, later this afternoon, during the afternoon and into tonight. Uh, everybody, uh, please have a safe Memorial Day weekend. Please take uh, some time to remember what the weekend means. Uh, as we remember those that have given up their lives for uh, the nation that we live in and, uh, you know, try and stay safe. If you're in the New York area, you can head down to Jones Beach where uh, they got the planes going. Uh, it's quite the, quite the air show uh, at Jones Beach uh, continuing this afternoon and again on Sunday. And I don't think the weather is going to be getting too much in the way of that. Just the traffic and you getting there might be a different story, but uh, nonetheless, um, lots to do this weekend. So just to enjoy, and but remember, and everybody have a great uh, rest of your Saturday.